Kim here from CustomDollBaby.com. Welcome back to the Rooting Series. Last semester, or before Christmas, we spent a lot of time laying a rooting framework. What is rooting? What is meant by micro-rooting? How micro-rooting works and why it works? On what materials does it work? In Rooting 102, we talked about different ways to root. So I gave an overview of all the different ways that artists root their hair. They fall into three main categories. The jab and grab or stab and grab methods, most popular. root a loop my personal favorite. And the cuticle aligned single strand rooting, which is more or less technically correct and something you should expect to see on your very high-end reborn dolls. So now that we've established how rooting works and the different ways to root, we are finally ready to talk about needle shopping. Welcome to Assessing Your Rooting Needle Needs. During uh, this tutorial, we're going to answer the following questions. What are the different kinds of rooting needles? What is a gauge and why does it matter? And which needle do you need for which kind of hair? I'll also mention that there is a companion blog article um, on the artist, Reborn Doll Artist Tips blog at customdollbaby.com. So there's a lot more information and photos out there to help you to follow along as we go through the material. So in Rooting 101, we talked about how rooting works, specifically what a rooting needle does. There's three main functions of a rooting needle. The first is to make a hole. So the rooting needle is sharp, it pierces a hole in the vinyl. The second function is to grab the hair. The third function is to force the hair into the vinyl. So your needle makes a hole, grabs the hair, forces that hair into the vinyl. The different kinds of rooting needles are designated by how they do that second function, how they grab the hair. So the first question we're gonna understand is what's your hair grabber? There are two types of hair grabbers typically used in rooting needles. The first is a barb. The barb is a small notch that's cut out of a rooting needle. The rooting needles that have barbs are triangular in shape. They have three sides and the barbs are located on one, if not all, of these sides. The other needle grabber is a fork. Fork needles, unlike barb needles, use the tip of the hair, the tip of the needle to grab the hair. So there's a tiny notch right at the tip of the needle, and it's this notch that grabs the hair and forces it down into the vinyl. Barbed rooting needles are the most popular to use. I'm very heavily reliant on barb needles. There are four types of barb needles, at least that I'm aware of, there are possibly more. The first is the crown rooting needle. The needle has three sides with one barb on each side for a total of three barbs. The next type is a regular rooting needle, which also has three sides, but there are two barbs on each side for a total of six barbs. There are compact rooting needles. Compact rooting needles have three barbs on each corner, giving you nine barbs total. And finally, the notched rooting needles have one or two barbs staggered on the corner, so you can have anywhere from three to six barbs on your needle. So what difference does all of that make? In general, the more barbs you have, the more hair you'll grab. It rhymes, so it must be true, right? <laughs> Moving on, the next type of needle are the forked rooting needles. They don't have uh, varied numbers of forks. There's always one fork, it's always at the very tip. I actually have a microscope image of one of my rooting needles. So you can see that itty bitty little notch there. It actually is, is split up the body of the needle and it's that little notch that grabs the hair. So one thing that you have to keep in mind with a fork needle is that it only works when oriented properly. 
So make sure you have a tool that helps you to remember which way that fork is pointing so you can always align it to your hair, otherwise it's not going to pick up any hair. How much hair you grab is determined by the size of your hair grabber. The size of your hair grabber is determined by the size of your needle. The size of the needle is indicated by the gauge. Now gauge, as you may have noticed, is a backwards measurement. The higher the gauge, the smaller the needle. What sense does that make? It turns out that wire is also measured in gauge. And gauge is basically how far or how much force they had to put on the metal for the wire to stretch it to the thinness that they got. So what I have here is a headband, it's a plain elastic headband. And you'll notice as I pull the bottom of this headband, it gets skinnier compared to where it started. So I have to pull really tight to get it really skinny and not so tight to make it thicker. So that's the same idea with gauge. The harder you have to pull on it to get that width, the higher the gauge. And it works the same way in rooting needles. The higher the gauge, the tinier the needle. So why does gauge matter? On a needle with barbs, the lower your gauge, the fatter the needle, the deeper your barbs. If it's a skinnier needle, like a 43 or 46 gauge needle, the barbs are gonna be very shallow. And the depth of the barb determines what size hair you can grab. So now we're gonna start talking about microscopic stuff here. If you think about a strand of hair, the strand of hair on your own head, what you're seeing is probably 40 to 80 microns of diameter. So that's the width of your hair stretched across the, st the strand. Same idea with mohair. The diameter of mohair is also very tiny. It's actually a lot smaller than human hair. Anywhere from 24 to 18 microns. We're getting very microscopic here, so let's blow it up on the dry erase sort. So when you think about gauge and how that impacts what kind of hair you can root. So if this is your barbed rooting needle, okay, and that's the barb, the barb has a depth to it. On the Bountiful Baby website, sometimes they'll actually indicate the depth for you. So for example, a 38 gauge needle has on average a barb depth of 70 microns. However, a 42 gauge needle, which as you recall, is skinnier, smaller, is going to have a barb depth of 20 nanometers. I'm sorry, microns. <laughs> so if this is a 42 gauge, the distance from here to here is gonna be 20 microns. Now, hair also has a diameter to it. So if you think of a strand of hair, if you're looking at the cross section of that hair, the diameter varies by the donor. So human hair, as we were saying, is anywhere between 40 to 80 microns. Whereas wool and mohair is anywhere between 30 to 17 microns. This is super tiny. So, if I've got my 42 gauge needle with my 20 micron barb and I want to root me some human hair, I'm going to have a really bad time with that because I've got a barb of only 20 microns that I'm trying to put 80 microns of hair in. I'll get hair every once in a while, but it's not gonna work well. It's not gonna catch. And if you don't believe me, watch this. <laughs> okay, so this is a 42 gauge crown needle. 
have a barb on each side for three total and they are staggered as you might be able to see in the video so 42 gauge needle which means these itty bitty little barbs are roughly 20 microns deep this is human hair specifically is Asian human hair so the width of this hair the diameter of the strand is roughly 80 microns so it is four times the size of my barb now it's not going to be impossible to root but it's not fun it takes a lot more work to force it in because the hair is so much thicker than the needle contrast that with this yearling mohair which is a lot smaller hair diameter and now it's very easy for me to root because the needle has large enough barbs for the size of the hair that I'm rooting I can even grab a few at a time if I want I'm sure you're thinking, oh my goodness, barb and, and microns and, and what, how, do, how am I supposed to know what the diameter of my hair is? Well, I went ahead and did the research. So we have average hair diameters organized by donor on my website in the companion blog article. So please feel free to reference that when you're needle shopping and hair shopping. Ha <laughs> ha